Greetings ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only, Ray the Flying Squirrel here, and I am back for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos once again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars for the Super Nintendo slash Super Famicom version, while the Nintendo Switch remake should be on its way. So, last time, if I recall correctly, we somehow managed to able to traverse into uh, Bolem Temple, and speaking of Bolem, we somehow managed to able to bump into Bolem for the second time, and as a result, you know, we somehow managed to deal with him, alongside with the forms of some clone counterparts, specifically for Mario, Princess Toadstall, and Mallow, just because I don't feel like trying to show you guys the forms of Geno clone, as well as Bowser clone, but that's just because I've already mentioned about the forms of the actual description for them, during the forms of the actual uh, bios and stuff like that, or something relates to that. So, in addition to that, we also did manage to be able to traverse into, not only for the likes of the forms of Monstro Town, but also about the fact that we somehow briefly got started to able to actually visit into another location, which appears to be Bean Valley. So speaking of which, though, is about the fact that today for this video is about the fact that we're able, able to actually get started able to explore the majority of some parts of the forms of Bean Valley. Now as a result we can able to actually traverse through different pipes and all that stuff in order to able to progress while at the same time trying to able to deal with some more enemy encounters along the way. So I believe way though there are certain pipes as you can tell that sometimes it can either lead you to a uh, certain progression or at the same time they can lead you to dead ends. So Either way, though, hopefully we'll try to able to navigate for this particular pipe maze structure. So, either way, though, at least this particular location is not too shabby for the most part. Well, despite the fact that this is where the point where the fact that as soon as we're able to get to uh, yet another location that we're about to be entering at some point, that we might be able to come across into the most annoying aspect about the game to me, though, that's, of course, isometric platforming, which, as a result, yeah, you probably already know what this is going to be going on in this for the sake of time, so... Anyway, so a few things I want to explain for this point today, and that's what appears to be about the fact that today's day is of course the OSD 12th of August today, in this case in 2023 today. Naturally speaking, for those of you probably wondering, that I believe, if I was assuming correctly, that Tiana, she's almost finishing up Kirby's Return of Dreamland Deluxe so far. Although, mind you about the fact that after the events of that particular final set of missions that she obviously accomplished during the forms of Merry Megaland, that my god, for I've heard that her thumbs was actually aching. So because of that though, she will definitely need to get a lot of recovery from that after the events of those very, very hardest and without doubt the toughest missions that she has to go through for the sake of the forms of Merry Megaland. So, but at least at the same time though, she will be definitely going to be coming back into the forms of Kirby's Return of Dreamland Deluxe exponentially for the sake of the forms of, you know, Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays potentially before we move on to another set of Kirby Let's Plays for the future, specifically just to tackle for certain spin-off games and pretty much everything else for that besides. So, but either way though, that might be saying something. So, oh, and another thing too about the fact that recently, as far as I've noticed that I forgot to mention about, is that there's a new game called The King of Fighters 13. Global Match is actually getting its release date and it's about to be releasing at some point uh, let's just say a day before uh, Super Mario RPG Remake is going to be on its way. So relatively speaking now about the fact that the release date for the King of Fighters 13 uh, Global Match is going to be releasing on November, specifically November 16th in this year. So because of that though, and on top of all that stuff though, I believe if I recall correctly, they're about to be getting a physical version of the game at some point in during the forms of around the same day as, well, the actual game launches on digital surfaces or something. Well, mind you about the fact that it's been a very long while since I actually have mentioned something related to the forms of, you know, physical uh, releases during that time. Especially noticeable because concerning about that particular point where recently, uh, good news I want to able to point things out. Actually, I'll get to more explanations until for later because here we have a yet another enemy encounter that we somehow managed to bump into. And this what appears to be buddy forms of Chewy. Uh, Chewy he does have 90 HP and if you kill them basically you get about roughly about 
uh, 14 experience points. However, it does not drop any coins at all. So, I have honestly have no words to able to think about it. But still, that could be kind of uh, weird at points. So, but yeah, these guys are not too shabby. Especially noticeable that, well, assuming of course if you have Mario or Bowser on your team. Basically though, you can able to dish out as many of those Chewies as much as you can. So, but either way... Yeah, these guys are not too much of a challenge, although sometimes those enemies right there, that they obviously get a little bit more aggressive at one point, but then again, it's a good thing we did somehow keep on leveling up every once in a while, because obviously with level ups, then more, you know, the stronger you become, so, but either way though, that might be saying something, so... Anyway, so there's another explanation I should probably explain about this as well, is that I actually have some good news to tell you, and that's what appears to be about the fact that I finally managed able to purchase myself the expansion pass for Splatoon 3, meaning about the fact that I can finally able to actually go in and explore in Garbler, based off from Splatoon 1, and on top of that, assuming of course if the uh, the second uh, DLC called Side Order might potentially try to release later on throughout the year, so but either way though, that might be saying something, so either way though, because I'm very appreciated that I finally managed able to get, you know, Splatoon 3 DLC right now, so better late than ever I suppose. It's been about uh, roughly five months uh, ago since when that particular DLC has first came out, well at least in ever since after the events of the February Nintendo Direct, but either way though, that will be something for that matter, so... Oh, originally, I was expecting to try to able to actually try to get myself a uh, Dragon Slayer Trilogy on the Switch, but unfortunately though, I didn't get enough cash for it, so either way though, well, at the same time, though, just trying to able to keep on saving up for not only WarriorWare Move It, but also with the forms of, you know, Luigi's Mansion 2 Remaster, and on top of that, the new Princess Peach game, and of course, the remake of Super Mario RPG. So because of that, though, and, you know, despite the fact that I'm almost running low for our Nintendo Switch physical games shelving at the moment, but at least we might be able to actually get enough benefits uh, before the actual Switch is lifespan is about to end at some point god knows until next year or 2025 so it's hard to tell for this point honestly so either way though and uh there's also another thing i should probably mention about this as well since about the fact that Tiana, she's already mentioned about this is that obviously Stuart, cap king 74 he's now working on the next pokemon let's play which appears to be a remake of generation one which appears to be, of course, Pokemon Left, uh, Pokemon Fire Red and Pokemon Leaf Green. I apologize for my commentary because it's a little bit slightly iffy at this point today, but that's just because about the fact that I'm almost a little bit slightly tired. But apart from those aside things, though, despite the fact that I just keep on hearing Tiona's rage-inducing moments, whatever she's trying to able to go for a lot of failed attempts. Well, despite the fact that the actual failed attempts or failed montage for certain mission accomplishments for, you know, the majority of Merry Mecha Land was cut. That's just because, you know, she doesn't want to able to waste time to able to actually hear a lot of frustration here and there. So, I could possibly understand why, so... Anyway, so here's another enemy that we actually stumbled across into, and that's what appears to be Shy Away. Uh, Shy Away does have 140 HP, and they only drop one experience point, but regardless of everything else though, I believe they'll try to drop about 30 coins if possible, despite the fact that the actual result is not very accurate for my description, so I apologize for this point, folks. And, uh, anywho though, so despite that, however though, it's about the fact that despite that the weather condition is still pretty bad in the UK anyway, so because I was expecting to able to actually get ourselves some very good weather conditions for summer anyway, but it seems so far for this year in particular for the weather conditions compared to last year in the UK anyway, seems feels a bit lackluster this time around, so yeah, I was not expecting that, so... But anyways though, so, oh nice, we got ourselves a tack up for Mario, so that should be all pretty swell. And how come I just somehow missed that? Okay, whatever, we'll just use a uh, group hug at one point, so just in case, oh, he just somehow flies away. Okay, 
Fair point, fair game. But, in addition to that, there's also yet another enemy encounter that we might bump into. And this time, what appears to be by the forms of Trump Trump. Trump Trump does have 150 HP, and they drop about 12 experience points if you kill them. And if I recall correctly, you get about 5 points as a reward. So, yeah, not much just going for the sake of convenience, that is. So... Yeah, these are basically like the equivalents to that previous encounter with those chain jump like enemies from ever since in Booster Tower. So, but either way, that, that might be saying something. So, I believe if I recall correctly, that uh, for the, the entire portion of the forms of, you know, Bean Valley, as far as I'm aware, that I think we're almost nearly at the end of this particular location. Because as far as I'm aware, since that we've already come across into that safe block from earlier, uh, that means about the fact that as soon as we're able to proceed to the next room, then we might able to actually make our way to the ending portion of Bean Valley. So, yeah, without doubt, the shortest area in the game by far. Well, at least I thought so anyway, so... Anyway, there goes the forms of Chomp Chomp. And exponentially, we get ourselves the next level up for Gino. So, let's just go ahead and check the actual status quickly. So, I think we'll go ahead and upgrade ourselves... Uh, you know, just a bit of health. Just in case we do need some more health before we encounter some of the tougher battles, specifically certain boss fights. So, anyway, so as you can see on this particular section right there, they have like five pipes. But in order to able to get into one of those pipes, as you can see, that one of those shy guys did somehow water the actual uh, Chewies right there. And in order to able to actually get into those specific pipes, we need to be able to get rid of them. So either way though, that's the entire portion of this particular section right there. In order to be able to find some, uh, you know, tons of goodies and all that stuff. So, but either way though, that's essentially what I'm going to be focused on for now. Before we move on to the ending portion of Bean Valley. Before we move on to a new location we can able to go into. Now I think, if I was assuming so anyway, that we actually get into the point about the fact that we might potentially try to able to get ourselves the sixth star piece well not necessarily happening this weekend but maybe in a couple of weeks later as far as i'm assuming so anyway although as for this point right now that as you probably already know about the fact that i'm always obviously going to be tackling for not only the continuation portion of super mario rpg but also recently we decided able to tackle through the game boy advance version of you know the original donkey kong country just able to compare you know two of those versions so far although we were expecting to able to do the Game Boy Color version but not now because that particular version is pretty infamous for most players especially noticeable with all that screen crunch and you name the rest so well it looks like that Princess Toadstore has now reached to this next level up and we'll go and upgrade the you know just more health I know I was originally trying to able to go for this particular form of pattern, but honestly, I just want to able to choose whatever stuff I want to go for, so that might be my case anyway, so... Anyway, so, yeah, I might as well able to go ahead and use one of my color items as far as this is concerned, although, for whatever reason, I think I might as well able to just uh, use the mushroom for Mario anyway, so I think we might be okay for now, so... Anyway, so, so once we hit this chest, we might be able to stumble across into a much more of a stronger variation of certain treasure chests that we've already come across into in the past. Except this time, we actually stumble across into Box Boy. Our Box Boy does have 900 HP, and on top of that, if you kill him, basically you get 100 experience points, which is a lot. And in addition to that, 150 coins. So, that seems kind of worth it though, if you're assuming, of course, as you can tell, I'm using the Ultra Jump, so that deals a massive, massive damage. So that would be pretty recommendable though, although for the blast move, as what Box Boy did somehow perform, jeez, that deals a lot of damage. And on top of that, every once in a while, that he summons Fatso. Fatso does have 420 HP, however, you can't get experience points or coins if you defeat him, so yeah, it seems kind of pointless if you try able to take him on, although we might as well take him down anyway, just in case we can able to actually deal with the forms of some very tricky and powerful enemies as far as this is concerned, but at the very least that takes care of the forms of Box Boy, because seriously, I just really love 
not only the super jump, but also ultra jump as well. Although, mind you, there is actually a special reward if you do manage to able to do, uh, if you manage to able to do, rather, uh, consecutive jumps. Although, apologize for that particular tongue twist in the end, folks, which I m will admit the right away, because I'm still a little bit kind of tired. But, um, hopefully by that time until tomorrow, then I should be able to be fully awakened by then. Especially noticeable, we can able to discuss upon quite a number of things, potentially. So, anywho though, um, short things worth noting for is about the fact that you can able to actually get two special items if you do manage to able to pull off a successful consecutive timing jumps for depending on what special move you use, like super jump or ultra jump. Like for instance, I believe if you reach 30 jumps, you get yourselves um, a word classified for saying the next um, accessory or something like that. And if I recall correctly, if you go for 100 jumps, which is the hardest thing ever, basically you get yourselves a very useful item as well for accessory departments or something like that. So a bit either way though, despite the fact that I haven't exactly uh, looked upon that much uh, facts lately, but that's just because about the fact, as you can tell, that I somehow managed able to realize that Bowser did somehow die. But that's okay, because thankfully with Peach, basically we can able to actually revive him, so... Oh, nice. Full recovery. That's actually pretty swell. So, a bit either way, though, that's the uh, coolest aspect about the forms of comeback. So, anywho, though. So, again, there's not much else I can say, apart from the fact that we're relatively speaking. I just kind of believe that, you know, between both the remake of Super Mario RPG, alongside with the forms of uh, the King of Fighters 13 Global Match, are about to be releasing during the forms of the November month, along with the forms of uh, WarioWare Move It, and, you know, the November release dates are going to be pretty insane for the Nintendo Switch by far. I mean, what is this, like 2013 all over again with some 3DS stuff? And especially noticeable with the biggest Mario game to be released on the Wii U, which is of course Super Mario 3D World. But either way though, that'll be a topic for a later time, especially noticeable because, I don't know about you, but what, after we've basically done with the forms of the Donkey Kong Country on the Game Boy Advance, um, I don't know about you, but maybe at some point in the future, I can probably be able to actually do the Game Boy Advance versions of some other games, for that matter. Like, for instance, with the entire Super Mario Advance um, saga of all things. Like, I know for the fact that we've already tackled through Super Mario Bros. 2 on the both the NES version and the Super Nintendo version, thanks to the Super Mario All-Stars version. And same applies with Super Mario Bros. 3 as well. And um, on top of that, with Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo version back in 2018, and probably in the second half for the sake of the forms of 2019 because of all that, you know, the incident about the forms of the Wii U's save data corruption. So because of that though, relatively speaking though, about the fact that I just really loved able to actually compare uh, between multiple versions of the exactly the same game but with additional content here and there. Because that reminds me, I was originally trying to able to participate in by doing uh, the Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening on the Switch version, but unfortunately though, due to time constraints, that also means about the fact, wow, that particular lizard chameleon, whatever that enemy is supposed to be, or the Gepgo, whatever, he just somehow committed suicide for able to take a hit from himself. That's actually pretty insane. So, anyway. Oh yeah, every once in a while for certain chests, as you can tell, we actually stumbled across into that bit of a slot machine syndrome. Where basically, if you try to line up the exactly same items, like I just did for those three flowers in a row. Basically though, I believe if you managed able to match exact, like, three mushrooms, or three stars, or three flowers, I believe, as you can tell, that I somehow managed able to get myself a frog coin. So... That's actually pretty swell, I might add. And, uh, although if you somehow managed able to get incorrect match, I, I believe if I recall correctly, though, it's about the fact that you do able to come across into, uh, Box Boy, which is definitely, is without doubt, the strongest, uh, treasure chest enemy in the game, but that's just because about the fact that with the amount of damage input, especially noticeable with that particular special move that he pulls off from, like Blast, or anything else like that, that, that could be pretty deadly, though, so, but either way, though, 
And I don't think this is the room I was thinking about. Maybe I was keep on thinking about the previous room because as far as I'm aware, that there's actually a secret area we can able to actually access to. Assuming of course about the fact that, yeah, this is not the room I was thinking about. So let me just uh, hit back out and I think it's potentially that pipe over there where the uh, Trump Trump was. So let me go ahead and uh, try to avoid as many of those enemies as I could. So yeah, as you can see, the path is now open, which pretty much leads us to uh, Crate Guy's Casino, which basically means we can able to actually do some bit of gambling. However, we can't do anything in here at the moment because we do need a special item for it. So yeah, what's the point of coming here in the first place? But there's a catch to this, because if we go back onto the forms of Tapole Pond, you know with the forms of that melody part, as I've already been into for about... Uh, twice so far, uh, we definitely need to learn the next song until we're able to actually get ourselves a consolation prize. So, but either way though, um, and I think if I recall correctly, this will be the final time for doing this, especially noticeable because once we're able to deal with this, I'm pretty sure about the fact that we can able to just, well, simply advance and just move on, basically. So either way though, if I recall correctly for that particular music tone, it could be summed up as like, well, I don't know, this. Alright, so looking good so far. And I think this might... Hold on, there we go. That looks okay to me. And something tells me about the fact that he somehow managed to be able to appreciate with that particular tone I somehow managed to pull this off. But if you think you've done here, well as it turns out about the fact that we need to do a final uh, uh, thing for the sake of the forms of the top hole melody thing. But luckily you uh, automatically go back in here. So yeah, I suppose about the fact no matter what though, it doesn't really matter which uh, specific tone you want to go for. Although I have managed to able to try this on uh, my Super Nintendo Classic Mini version of the game. Um, I suppose it really doesn't matter. I don't know. Well, mind you, it's been about uh, six days ago since I actually have last played this. Because as far as what Tiana, she's already mentioned about this so many times. Basically though, for now, that Super Mario RPG uploading schedules will be on weekends for now. Because I almost assume about the fact that, well, we might go back onto Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays scenario, but thanks to uh, Kirby's Return of Dreamland Deluxe Return Hiatus, after the events of sometime in spring season, then we can obviously, for sure, that we'll definitely try to able to finish that game up before we get onto the, uh, not only Kirby Star Allies, because I was originally trying to able to go for uh, Kirby Star Allies, but also for certain Kirby spin-off games as well. But that can wait for a later time, especially noticeable because, well, I don't want to bring up too, uh, too many uh, spoiler details for this point in time, so... But, uh, yeah, in terms of everything else I could possibly explain about this as well, um, for what I've noticed is that the price tag for the Spider-Man 2 PlayStation 5 console, uh, for what I've noticed on the actual price tag, is ridiculously expensive. Like, as far as I'm aware, it's actually currently on to £569.99, so, jeez, I don't know if I can able to afford that, personally, but that's just because, although I do like the design of the actual PS5 system itself, especially noticeable it's all sleek and everything, but, um, I'm actually gonna be start to saving up, like I said before, especially noticeable because, well, like I said before about the fact I'm pretty sure we're not exactly done with the actual Nintendo Switch era of games just yet, because, yet again, though, there are a lot of rumors and leaks keep on mentioning about the forms of the Nintendo Switch 2, and I'm just getting sick of the forms of rumors and leaks these days, especially no support. They just, they just never stops, you know. But anyway, though, uh, the next thing I want to mention is that the Xbox fans can finally able to actually get a chance to play Final Fantasy 14 after 10 years. So, yeah, about time that Xbox owners can finally manage to able to experience, you know, Final Fantasy 14 for reals. So, yeah, that's what I can really say about it. Anyway, 
And there's also another thing I should probably mention about this as well. Um, every once in a while, for the sake of the bombs of Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2, uh, they now start able to bring up some spotlight trailers to able to give us a massive highlights or spotlights for specific characters. Like, for example, that we've already seen some spotlight trailers for not only for Spongebob, but also for Squidward as well. So, yeah, that's that's actually pretty interesting. Even though it's kind of similar situation as the forms of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for a little bit, although except the fact that it's based off from a different property and stuff like that. So, anywho. Oh, and another thing too, and what makes this pretty stupid in my opinion, and that's what appears to be about the fact that apparently though, uh, Disney Plus is about to raise its premium price, and I was like, are you kidding me? That's a result for that particular stuff though. At first thought, it was actually quite cheap at first, but every once in a while, they start able to increase the price a bit. So, like, I think if I recall correctly on the... Uh, the US currency, it was previously, it did say $10.99, but now they somehow increased that into $13.99, uh, $13 and as a result, that's ridiculous. So as a result, I just have no words to say about this, especially noticeable because, although don't get me wrong, I do kind of enjoy Disney Plus as a service as it is, but I haven't exactly uh, used that particular service since. Although, mind you, the reason why I used the actual surface in the first place is because of something related to Marvel stuff, basically, so... Anyway, so we've made our way to the very end of Bean Valley, and we somehow come across into, assuming, it's another boss fight. So, I wonder what boss fight are we going to be fighting against this time? It could be something more related to the forms of that particular plant-like... Um, monster as far as we somehow come across into. So, either way though, I suppose we're miles able to take him down no matter what. Oh, by the way, something's worth noting for. I was originally trying to able to show you guys the optional boss fights, but unfortunately though, I somehow managed to able to cut to the point where basically though, I just couldn't find it somewhere. But hopefully I will try to do it on the extra content before we move on to the final, uh, final frontier. For the sake of the forms of a lot of progression for Super Mario RPG's case. So, yeah, I do apologize for this point, folks. But then again, though, because I somehow got distracted by the forms of multiple stuff here and there. Especially noticeable because, well, thankfully, the actual uploading schedules has gone back on track for just a little bit. But I'm sure our pacing will go a little bit more steady for the most part. So, either way, though. Yeah, for the most part, I'm pretty sure this boss fight does have three, or actually, kind of think about it, four phases, as far as I'm aware. Like, for instance, phase one, we only have to deal with, like, one of those specific, uh, plant-like thingies right there. Although, the best strategy I can think about when it comes to dealing with these guys is to use Snowy special move for Melo, because that way, the ice is actually super effective when it comes to dealing with these guys. So, that could be also applied for the main threat of this entire fight if we keep on trying to able to beat the likes out of these guys. So, unfortunately though, I haven't exactly found out the actual bios for the sake of the forms of how much health they've got. And especially noticeable because, well, I'm usually just trying to mainly focusing on boss fights in particular. So... Anyways, once you're done with this phase, the fourth and the final phase begins. So in some cases though, we have the main threat, which appears to be Mega Slimax. Uh, Mega Slimax does have 1000 HP, and they drop about 120 experience points, and for some reason, no coins. So, not too surprising there, but that's okay though, because hopefully we can able to deal with him no problem, thanks to forms of Snowy. Um, special move for the likes of Melo, so that should be all pretty swell, I might add. So, oh, and another thing too is about the fact that, yeah, I did somehow manage to able to watch some more um, stuff related to My Little Pony Tell, Tell Your Tale, because as far as I've no noticed, is that they've almost finished up the entire uh, season one of all the first series, for that matter, for the sake of the forms of Tell Your Tale, 
Although, it's actually getting a bit promising as far as this is concerned. Although, mind you about the fact that it's been a very long while since I actually mentioned this topic. Especially noticeable because, as a result, that we're still waiting for the forms of the fifth chapter. Which, as far as I'm aware, I believe we've only got about a month left until uh, the fifth chapter is going to be releasing. So, but either way though, I'm still curious to know and also just to be curious to check it out. Although, mind you, I probably... Well... I just gotta know what to say, because either way though, it's been quite a few uh, days since I actually mentioned that kind of stuff, so... Oh jeez, the flame war is pretty unblockable, so... But at least Peach got very lucky right there, or Princess Toadstool, as in the forms of the Super Nintendo slash Super Famicom version of my ad, but... Still, couldn't imagine such. Alright, so let me just give Mid Mushroom to Princess Toadstool, just in case before she dies. And, obviously, if she dies, we can't be able to actually access to, uh, group hug for healing. So, imagine that would be a total disaster. So, especially with that particular pedal, um, shower, uh, attack that he's been using, that's pretty dangerous, I might add. Oh, he's almost down, what I've noticed. Oh, jeez. Hopefully we'll finish him off. Nope, not yet. Sometimes it takes a bit of a while. But thankfully this boss is actually really easy, so either way though, assuming of course that his damage output for special attacks can be felt a bit dangerous at points. So, and every once in a while we got the next level up for Mello, so that should be all pretty swell. And from here we can now able to progress, but before you're able to progress any further, I think something tells me of that particular point where uh, that shy guy just somehow mentioned something related to, uh, uh, Valatania. Hmm, I wonder what that's about. And also, something dropped out of the sky, and we're able to see what this is. And it looks like it's a seed. So yes, we'll definitely take a seed, because this will be, uh, pretty useful. Especially noticeable if you really want to get some very unique items to your disposal then you should probably be able to actually keep the seed with you at all times. Don't waste it, because otherwise you're probably going to miss out a lot of goodies and stuff like that. So, despite the fact that I'm almost still running out of my item inventory um, storage, which I'm also able to get rid of the not only Apple Juice, but also with the forms to pick me up, because thankfully with comeback, special move for Princess Toadstool will be useful. And it looks like we've activated a Beanstalk, just like in any other Mario games since Super Mario Bros. So, but if you really want to climb onto the Beanstalk, you have to jump on this block again. And this is all autopilot, so, or automated, as far as what I meant to say. And this is what I mean about the fact that every once in a while we come across into the most annoying part, and that is a lot of emphasis on isometric platforming. But, before I get into more details on that particular isometric platforming, here we actually have ourselves a yet another enemy encounters, and we're somehow going to be exploring in the skies above. Apparently that's what it says anyway. So, for instance, here's the, uh, these enemies are called, um, if I recall correctly, these are known as Birdie. Uh, Birdie does have, um, 150 HP, and if you kill them, basically you get about 3 coins and 16 experience points. So, that's something alright. So, but either way though, and, uh, yeah, this is what I mean about the fact that with the isometric platforming, sometimes I can't really tell on the actual judge of the actual jump and what have you, and trust me while I'm saying this, this does remind me of something related to Sonic 3D Blast a little bit. Especially noticeable because obviously about the fact that thankfully it doesn't require a lot of scrolling, thankfully, or fast scrolling if you run too fast. And especially noticeable because, well, relatively speaking though, sometimes that the color palettes might felt a bit too much for my liking, so... Anyway, so speaking of such though, here's another um, enemy we can able to actually deal with, and that's what appears to be known as Heavy Trooper. Heavy Trooper does have 250 HP, and if you kill him, basically you get 4 coins, and you get 32 experience points. So, and the special effect for that, especially noticeable as you can see I'm still using the Ultra Jump for the majority of the time, basically it deals really, really good damage if you do manage to be able to utilize not only 
uh, super jump, but also with regular jump and ultra jump as well. So that way you can able to actually just get rid of the forms of the heavy trooper, no, uh, no problem. So. Now, if I recall correctly, though, it's about the fact that we've almost at uh, the actual uh, maximum amount of those flower points, essentially, because, uh, as far as I'm aware, that you can only go up to, like, 99 flower points, as far as I'm aware. I'm not exactly sure if the remake might able to actually increase that, uh, quality, so, but I'm pretty sure it might able to actually increase even more on a Switch version or something like that, but I suppose we'll still need to find things out in a later down the road, for potentially speaking though, if Gamescom will decide to able to come into play, or perhaps even maybe they'll try to reveal more details about that, during any forms of the final general Nintendo Direct, uh, just around, you know, uh, 2024 is about to be on around the corner, so... Although I'm still not, not exactly sure for that particular speculation as far as I'm aware, but maybe they'll able to actually announce the final Mario Party game on the Nintendo Switch before they move on to the next system or something like that, because obviously that we're almost nearly at the forms of the three year gap of the forms of, you know, between it, uh, the release of Mario Party Superstars for potentially the next installment or something. Well, it's hard to tell for this point because I know for a fact that they are you know, start working on the forms of smaller titles or anything else like this every once in a while because obviously they've now done bigger titles and stuff like that, but that's besides the point. So yeah, you see what I mean? That the isometric platforming can be felt a bit annoying at times. In fact, it kind of reminds me of the level called, uh, Gene Gadget, uh, Zone. Specifically, Act 2, where you have to deal with this in the most annoying slant area where you have to deal with the actual isometric platforming and at the same time though sometimes the actual hit detection feels a bit wonky in um, Sonic 3D Blast when it comes to isometric platforming because you can actually go through that platform or just potentially speaking though if you time your jumps at the wrong time basically you clip for that moving platform no matter what and that ticked me off a lot especially noticeable at one point I did manage to able to play the game on my own time for a bit on the uh, panic puppet zone for instance jeez that really throws me off so at least potentially in Super Mario RPG, at the very least you don't clip through anything, so at least that's a good thing. It's just that you have to watch the actual drop shadow, so because of that though, sometimes though, it can be a bit of a pain at times, so... Well, as long as it's not uh, some frustrating platforming segment, unlike The Legend of Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, or should I say, Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. Oh, by the way, guys, um, I just want to get this out of the way for this point because I'm about to able to consider this the actual major point for the sake of the forms of the reason why we haven't exactly touched upon the new Zelda Let's Play for some time because I'm about to be able to exponentially try to deal with Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link or perhaps even maybe that someone else can able to do Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link at some point. But let me tell you up front, I do hate that game. Because obviously about the fact that, well, I'm sure that uh, we'll explain more details about that if we get to that particular game at some point. So, not now though, because obviously we're playing some good stuff so far. So, well, despite the fact that, you know, with Sonic Frontiers and Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania are both delayed for continuation parts, but that's just because we just want to get these games finished before we catch up with the forms of the continuation parts here and there. And thus, not to mention though, at some point on the 11th of September, there will be an um, uploading schedule break. So, meaning about the fact that I might as well take a break from uploading schedules for uh, let's just say, for instance, on the, f the 11th of September, and then I'm sure enough we'll, we'll be back for more uploading schedules in the midway point of Journey Forms event September. So I just want to classify that right from, a get right from the start. So, either way though, I don't know if it's possible I can be able to actually get that frog coin no matter what, because again, sometimes the isometric platforming can be filled a bit fiddly at times, so, and exponentially speaking though, is about the fact that, well, luckily with the analog sticks, that it won't be so much of a problem, but with the D-pad, it just feels unintuitive at points, so... But at least I'll admit though right away, it's pretty exhilarating when you, if you try to able to climb from vine to vine, so... 
So yeah, um, with that being said, I think we should probably end things off this point right here, despite the fact that I'm having some bit of struggles with the isometric platforming, but either way, join me next time for more of Let's Play of Super Mario RPG, The Legend of the Seven Stars, is that we'll be able to actually start able to explore the next town, which appears to be buddy forms of Nopius Town or something, so I'll see you guys until tomorrow. Later, fellas.